I think I have to first, uh, first to mention my Yoruba name, that is Adoni Olorisha, and I'm nevertheless also Susanne Wenger. I myself am Adoni Olorisha and not Adoni Olasu. Born on the 3rd of July 1915 in Graz, Austria, Susan Wenger, later to be widely known as Adoni Olorisha, after studying poetry, began her painting career at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts. She later developed a reputation of being a noted painter, exhibiting with great artists like Paul Klee in countries like Switzerland and France. Susan Wenger's early life in Austria was a short one. Her life changed when she came to Nigeria with her husband, Uli Bear, who was the lead drummer at the Institute of African Studies in then University of Ife, and later became an expert of phonetics at the University College Ibadan. Susan Wenga became so engrossed in the Nigerian traditional art, especially the Yoruba religion, that she stayed on in Oshobo, creating traditional sculpture that related to all the gods around Oshun and Oshobo. This came to be because when Susan Wenger first arrived, she did not accept the fact that a priest could have skillfully looked into the seed of time and tell what was to become. I, I, I lived in Europe as an artist, and uh, as such one has maybe more chances to uh, live what I used to call an archaic life than in other professions. I never uh, submitted to office uh, uh, duties. For me, art is a ritual to life itself. It, it is so that the artist uh, uh, is having his ideas and his uh, uh, emotions, his impetus uh, from what nowadays is called the subconscious mind. And that is exactly the same as the case with the religions. So for me, since childhood, I had an attitude to life, a just quite normally participation into creation. And that is uh, exactly what an artist does or should do. So my uh, involvement in the Yoruba religion came very soon, quite natural, and I, I was lucky enough that I didn't have to earn money and to tend for my expenses. I came out married and I, I got involved into the local a, a, a traditions, cultural traditions, which were much, much stronger then, a, a, quite naturally, quite naturally. It, a, a, it was for me no plan. I didn't come for research. Life as such is research for me since I'm born. Meanwhile, during her stay in Nigeria, Susan Wenger got herself addicted to the Yoruba culture. With this, she became the daughter of the soil, which gained her a chieftaincy title, Ajagemo. Her close friends are the deep-rooted Yoruba people from whom she got her wisdom.
after settling in Agbolugode in Oshobo. Susan and Uli separated. Susan then focused her mind on painting and other kinds of art. This made her go deeper into the Yoruba culture. The Yoruba religion is immortal because it is truth. All over the world, the different so-called great religions are degenerating. People are not anymore a, a satisfied. They a, a, they believe in Mother Earth and nature as with the best people of all races. Uh, this intimacy with nature is growing, but uh, uh, as life is always problematic and uh, the human being also is born with the instinct that he wants to uh, know what is going on uh, with the uh, worried younger generations the introversion is quite naturally and people discover their own participation into life and nature and that is just what is going on in the Yoruba religion. As a priestess, Susan Wenga made sure that the Asheshe or the new sacred art got independent. Susan Wenger believed and insisted that the commitments required in the practice of such an art transcended mere encouragement. Armed with their faith and talent, the art would thrive in the face of the repelling force of modern religion. As a Yoruba traditional person, you go to the Babalao and they uh, if what you call as a Christian or as a Muslim, I think I saw the angels is an other, uh, another a, a metaphysical approach to truth as such. All religions are the one or other aspect of truth. Because, you know, when all religions know that God has created the world, the Yoruba rather think God creates the world, so uh, Obatala is the, the uh, senior Orisha, the oldest and most worthy Orisha. Uh, he uh, is the uh, vehicle of creation beyond time. And uh, uh, the, the, all the other Orisha have aspects which are uh, attributes to it. And the, the, the the central personage is Olodumari, but he has not as much human features as he may have for the Christian and the Muslim. It is a rather a new a feature of Yoruba religion that they address themselves personally to Olodumari, to God. It was before everything was possible only uh, to the remote sacredness to Olodu, Olodumari, through Eshu, through Ifa, who is the spokesman of creation. The most ancient shrine in Oshobo is dedicated to the water goddess Osho. The shrine, which is still being used by worshippers of Osho, is in the king's market at Oshobo. The Riverside Shrine and the Sacred Groves of Osho are found at Osho Ogbo Road in Osho State. Oshobo is a Yoruba town some 96 kilometers northeast of Ibadan and is the capital of Oshun State, created in August 1991. Based on the 1991 national census, Oshobo has a population of over 2 million people. The town, with an average rainfall of about 0.6 meters, lies mainly in the deciduous forest area and spreads towards grassland belt of Ikiru. Let's move in. 
Oshobo is the contracted form of Osho Igbo, spirit of the forest. The goddess of the Oshun River is believed to have cried, Osho Igbo, Bobo Koko Aromi Nimoti Foton, when a tree fell on a river and broke her pot of dye. The tree fell as a result of fire made at its root by Laroye and Timehi, the two founders of Oshobo. The town was founded by them in the late 18th century. They were hunters who finally settled in the lower terraces of the Oshun River after fleeing from drought. Originally, Timehi was an Oyo man and Laroye an Ijesha man. The groves as such are traditionally reserved for the religion, but while most towns have lost all or most of their sacred groves, the altars of the Yoruba religion are uh, uh, partly at home in the, uh, in the town's context and partly are their wilderness altars. And the Oshogbo groves of Oshogbo were, a, as, a, as a whole, the wilderness altar of the, of the gods, which Yoruba call Urisa. And the, the hostess is the goddess Oshun, who luckily is individualized with this beautiful small river. It is physically small, but it is in identity a very mighty affair. Oshun, the mother of the river, is one of the vital creative deities in the Yoruba belief. She is indispensable in the creation of life. Yoruba myth has it that creation is incomplete if Oshun, being a woman, is left out. The gods cannot create without her. She is the goddess soul of the water of life. She physically manifests in those who drink her water and procreate. She is the mother of all life, whether human, animal or plant, in the physical and metaphysical sense, since she is a goddess. It is an established fact that anyone with any form of sickness or disease that drinks from the direct source of Oshun River has the prerogative of being totally healed. Why is Oshun Oshubu Festival celebrated? It is to commemorate and renew the pact between Oshun Goddess and Oba Larohi Badewolu, the first Ataoja of Oshubu, so that Oshubu town will always be protected and blessed if the people will continue to offer her sacrifice annually. Oshun, the second wife of Shongo, regulates conduct and is a factor of cohesion in the city. Hence the saying, Omotiyo bo shobu, awakbele. Anyone who wants to live and prosper in Oshobu must be of a gentle, hardworking, and honest disposition. Oshun Oshobo Festival is therefore a cultural heritage of the genuine Oshobo sons and daughters. The town has established itself as a richly endowed cultural center of Nigeria through its annual crowd pulling Oshun Festival. Yeah, the uh, uh, last four years, and I can say uh, uh, all the time since I'm in the Ashun Groves, and that is over 40 years, one can say that the participation uh, is growing and the happiness of the 
a people in the procession and involved in the rituals, a, the, the, the whole situation is getting happier and more and more normal without any complications. Susan Winger insisted that refuge must be built for traditional gods who are currently targets of hot chase in the hands of Muslims and Christians alike. This determination motivated her personal and physical supervision of building a shrine. She used her artistic genius to turn the shrine to what it is today. The beautiful outcome of the shrine later spurred Aduni to convince the federal government to pronounce Oshun Grove a reserved land. This was made possible with the aid of her fellow traditionalists and the traditional rulers in Oshibu. Hence, Oshun Grove is today a notable tourist center to be reckoned with. Susan Wenger's philosophy places art and rituals together. She believes that it takes the sacrifice of kola nut and sugar cane to understand the ways of Oshun goddess. Aduni later artistically interpreted this as Oshun's way of preserving her privacy, which must not be surrounded by any feature of mosque, church or prison walls, except the walls of the shrine which must be built with sand and not manufactured cement. Obatala priests know that a, a, a Obatala is the father of the other Urisha in Mus, one dimension of the transmission. A, a, all the other Urisha shrines have to have a, a Omitutu also, and Obatala himself. A, a, he, he accepts the kola nut and answers oracular when the kola nut is being wetted with omitutu. In Yoruba religion, Orisha is the name given to heroes and great men who are venerated and deified. Orisha is a common name for gods known and worshipped by different townships under different appellations. To the Yorubas, Orisha is a god that is highly worshipped and revered because he is regarded as an intermediary between Oloro, that is God, and man. Hence, Orisha is a co-worker with Oloro, that is God. This, however, resulted in the construction of many shrines and sculpture around the Oshun Grove in Ushubu. This shrine harbors gods.
Ah, mon pao, as-moi un peu palao. 